Welcome to Honest News. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Thank you for your support, Honest News Network. Our past away. I've been born The caption of this photo says, and this is Newsweek, it says Zohar, <clears throat> Zohar's translation unlocks the secrets of Jewish mysticism. You hear what, what I just read? Zohar's translation unlocks the secrets of Jewish mysticism. And Jewish mysticism is nothing more than a mystical interpretation of the Torah or the Old Testament scriptures. All right? Um, why is this significant? Did you notice they're, they're sitting in a cave? I think that's pretty significant. They're sitting in a cave. Uh, why is that significant? Well, let's take a look at some scripture and see if there's any similarities. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 7. God had given Ezekiel a vision, and he was revealing to him in a vision what the ancients of Israel were doing. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 7, And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold a hole in the wall. You look this word up in the original Hebrew, the word hole, and you'll find that it is the word cave. And that's something. Okay? It's the word cave. Now, let's go to the next verse. Remember, he's seeing this in a vision. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. What, is, what does this have to do with? Dig now in the wall. I didn't get this right away. It took a little while before the Lord, before I was able to understand what God was showing me. There were, there were branches or something. There were trees, branches, whatever that they were blocking the entrance to the cave. They were putting something in front of the cave entrance when they would go in there so people would not know that there was an entrance to the cave. This cave was used or was formed by digging out the rocks, querying out the rocks that they used for building the temple, building the wall of Jerusalem, and, and building you know, building uh, Solomon's kingdom. And so in the process of building Solomon's uh, palace and building the, the temple, these quarries were formed. And so this is where they are in the scripture here. They were inside uh, a cave off the wall of Jerusalem. And... Um, these are the ancients of Israel. And they had taken the furniture from the temple 
and they had the censors and different things, and they were they were worshiping the devil with God's holy instruments, with God's holy vessels. Are you listening? And without question, Solomon was involved in this too. And um, this is where the Freemasons, you know, this is where all this comes from, the Illuminati, the Freemasons. That's why they uh, really esteem Solomon. Um, but this is when Solomon was away from God, far from God, and he was serving other gods and... and uh, So there, here Ezekiel in a vision from God is digging in this wall, removing the things that are obscuring the, that are blocking the entrance to this cave. And once he removed those things and got them out of the way, it says, behold, a door. There was a door behind the things that were blocking the door. So once he got those dug out of the way, he saw the door. Are you listening? And this is what he saw. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. Now obviously, this is not actually happening. This is in a vision. But I'm sure to Ezekiel, it was as though it was really happening. How many have ever received a vision from God or a dream from God and it's as though it's really happening, right? And so Ezekiel is experiencing this in a way that it's actually happening. But we know if you go back a few verses, you'll find that this is a vision that Ezekiel is receiving from God. God is revealing to Ezekiel what's going on in secret. And they think nobody knows about it. Okay? Those that call themselves Jews today, they're bold about it. They're, they don't even care. They're, they're, they're brazen. And it's right in the news, right in Newsweek. Uh, back then, they were ashamed of it, and they did it in secret. But, I mean, just the picture that I just showed you, just look at that. You know, that they would allow that to be that picture to even be taken. You'd think they'd keep that secret. But they just don't care. And not only that, but I mean, this is the Kabbalah. This is the Zohar. And why are they doing it in a cave? What's the benefit of doing this in a cave? Well, without question, they're trying to get in tune, connected with or conjure. They're trying to connect again with what the ancients were doing. Are you listening? So let's go on and read some of this and see what was going on. And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. The wicked abominations. What were they doing in there? So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel were portrayed upon the wall round about. You know what this is talking about? It's talking about symbols, symbolism. No different than today, what they're doing, making a, a logo or you know, an, an iconic logo like Nike, whatever company it is, those those are what's called, um, you know, icons or idols. Um, but it gets into witchcraft is what it gets into. And this is, uh, you know, these pictures that they were scratching on the inside of the wall of these caves, why were, they, why were they portraying the beasts and the creeping things on the walls? What were they doing? What was the purpose of all this? Symbolism. Okay? It's symbolism. 
Go to the next verse. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jananiah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand. And a thick cloud of incense went up. See, those censers were only supposed to be used in God's service for the ministry, for the priests. And they're using them to worship the devil. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? In the dark. Every man in the chambers of his imagery. For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. So when you see this, people, I think we're moving in that direction, don't you? Don't you think they're moving in that direction? Abomination. God says, these aren't my people. Amen? They call themselves Jews. They may be possibly born a Jew, but inwardly, they're not a Jew. Amen? They're not God's people. These are Kabbalists, and they follow the Zohar and the Talmud. They're into mysticism, people. And this mysticism is taking over the earth. Have, have, has anybody ever heard of Gematria? Gematria, where they take numbers and match them up with letters and try to find secret hidden messages in the Old Testament scriptures and in the New Testament as well. Um, in the Hebrew and the Greek, they say they can take this gematria and they can find secret messages. That's what they're doing in this cave right here. And this rabbi in the center there is teaching the younger ones a, a gematria. is teaching them the Zohar, mysticism. Okay? And the only thing I can think of why they're doing it in a cave setting is because they're trying to reconnect with the ancients. They're trying to reconnect with what we read what we're reading here in Ezekiel. The same wicked uh, abominations that were going on back then. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery. For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. And as you may know, he goes to show him more abominations in the vision. It gets worse and worse and worse to where he sees they're worshiping the sun with their backs to the temple. Do you think anything else, any, anything different, I should say, is going on today, people? The same Babylon, the same wickedness. This, without question, is Mystery Babylon. This is Mystery Babylon, and it's taking over the whole world. Mysticism. So, <clears throat> I wanted to share these things with you based on the scripture so you could see for yourself uh, it's, this has to do with numerology, esotericism, uh, Gematria. That's what this has to do with. And this is taking over the science community. I may know that. So those that are the leading authority on science and psychology, 
in our world today are involved in this stuff. This is what they are involved in. And even the leader there of the World Bank, Lagarda, or Largarda, or whatever name that name is there, Lagarda, I believe it is, saying that the magic number seven, speaking about Gamatria. Do you see it's even affecting the World Bank? having to do with the global economy, All right? That's what the world is following. That's what they're following. So God didn't have to take you in a vision, didn't have to take you in a dream to show you, folks. There it is right there in front of you. Amen? In a cave. It wouldn't surprise me if they're not in the same cave that they were in back there. This very well could be the cave, Zedekiah Cave, that's open for the public during the day. I don't know where they're doing this. I maybe could dig a little bit and find out. But usually this cave is closed at night, so they could certainly be doing this at night in that cave, in the same cave that they were doing it back then. The very same cave. Amen. That's all for now. God bless you. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. In the name of the Lord, though Satan rages, we cannot be defeated. We've got the power.